before us? Three there, and then there's other ones that they're working on. So, okay. Yeah, what we did, if, I guess, if you don't mind, we get, <clears throat> I know some of us in the room, you know, no less than some don't. So, figured what we do. Thank you. It's a little intro presentation, and, you know, we can kind of just jog through, you know, briefly as far as current Utica projects and, you know, other projects we're working on as well. Okay. Other communities. So, yeah, we had no problem, thank you, time, we have no problem going through the specifics, but there are a few projects in here by way of example to show you that what you can expect. You know, we've done a project in Canastota that was a total, you know, burnout project, and uh, it, it's in here, I think, it's the first one. And if you look, that was contaminated site as well as completely vacant, had been manufacturing for a long time. Since the 1800s, actually goes back to wagon wheels were made on site, and uh, you know the, there's a before and after picture that pretty much tells the story. You don't need much more than that to to see that we're going to take a project from a condition like the security building. It's the next one, which was scheduled for demolition. That was supposed to come down in uh, 2014, I think, is what it was. And uh, it's Class A office building now. Legal Aid Society is in there. There's about 40 attorneys. Uh, we got an award for that building. And we included a copy of the you know, photocopy of that. So um, the other one on uh, Bleecker Street that's coming out of the ground right now. We've got the steel uh, coming. The steel uh, fabricators back on site, buttoning that up before before Christmas, before winter, so we can get the interior work on it. We're very close with it. A tenant who uh, is going to take the entire building, so that's on its way. Yeah, so. I, I think just to kind of jump off that as well, like the first one we did, you know, the um, Canasota project. I mean, that was something we built on spec. You know, here's this old contaminated property, blighted property. Nobody would touch this thing. You know, we were able to use, you know, an, um, a restore New York grant. You know, and that's why this 1900 Bleaker project is very similar in that capacity. Here's a site without, you know, the state's investment through a store. We wouldn't have been able to, you know, front all the costs for the abatement demolition. You know, so the exciting part is um, we already have a proposal signed for this site. The lease agreement has gone out. We're just basically waiting on that to be returned. So their legal counsel is reviewing it, and then we'll have a big announcement as far as who's coming in that property. It's a single tenant, you said? Single mm -hmm. tenant, all 90,000. Yeah. That's taking a little bit more time than we want, but they have very exacting specifications on the floor. To give you an example, the floor has to be so level, it can have no more than an eighth of an inch variation from one side to the other in pitch. That's how specific that, that floor has to be. So and, uh, we want them to pay for that. So anyway, when do you so, anticipate that all? Being, you know, signed off and uh, construction starting on that. Um, construction's ongoing right now. The, I mean, their specific stuff, um, it took them a little bit of time to sign the letter of intent that we had out with terms and conditions. They have an international ownership from China to Sweden. So it definitely slows things down having that kind of, you know, involvement. I, I You want to guess? Take I, I would say probably. We'll have like everything enclosed um, probably by January 1st, and then hopefully they're in the building no later than March 1st. Because there is some TI, we have ton improvements we have to do for them as well. So, you look at the original scope and cost of the project, what's what's changed in the last um, well, three years? So, from the time of the original. IDA application that we submitted, um, the cost of materials has just absolutely skyrocketed. You know, I don't think that's a surprise to anybody here in the room. So total project costs, I think initially in the application we had at 4.8 million, are probably going to push closer to seven and a half by the time we're done. One of the other unfortunate things we've all had to experience based on the pandemic was lead time. So I mean, when prior to it. We would order an HVAC system, heating and cooling, eight weeks. It would take about six to eight weeks to get uh, RTU, which is rooftop unit, ordered and delivered. 
10 months is what it's taking now just to get the same type of unit built and delivered. And the cost is crazy. So um, the other thing that definitely slows us down here, the hospital and Wolfskin project pretty much absorbed the vast majority of skilled labor in the trades. We had uh, a building, the, the next one that we're looking at, the New Century, which I'm sure is one of the projects you guys want to know about. We uh, put out an, or a request for pricing on the exterior painting in May. 12 companies received a letter, one showed up. And where we were expecting the price to be somewhere in the area of about 20 to 25,000 paint the outside, 47,500 is what they quoted. And we would have had to do all the prep work and provide the lid. So it was just, <laughs> it was a ridiculous price when we were like, no, we're going to have to wait till after the school uh, season is over because schools get their work done in the summertime as well. And, and it's, you know, it's, it's not a huge market. And when you have two major projects going at the same time, it gives the, you know, it's a supply and demand issue on labor. But good news is we've had three companies out there. We have awarded the work. It did come in less than 25, and uh, we should be starting on that. That'll be repainted before winter. So that's underway, too. All right. Now, one of the other things we want to say to everybody here, anytime anybody would like a tour of any of these properties to see the progress that we've got, by all means, just let us know. More than happy to take you guys through so you can see the progress. The interior of this building, the new century, has been substantially reframed. There was a lot of structural structural work around the stage that uh, we didn't anticipate that slowed down the finishing of that project, but that's been done. Floors have been removed. Foundations have been supported with uh, you know, additional shoring up in the basement, from the basement up. So that project's coming on pretty nicely. We're well, any time yeah. for that. It'll be done by March. Yeah, that'll be done by March. Do you have a tenant? Oh, I'm sorry, did you say tenant or time tenant? Uh, we don't have a tenant, but we do have an insurance company and a cybersecurity company that have looked at different elements of the building. Both like it, both love it, and uh, you know we do not yet have signs delivered. If you know of anybody, let us know. More than happy. Same question as Bleecker Street. So mm -hmm. you're five years into this, so the cost is. I have no idea what it is versus what it was in seventeen and. You know, so how do you cover the gap on Bleecker Street? How do you cover the gap on Tennessee Street? And they kind of tie in, you know, one and one and another. So part of the reason for the delay on both um, New Century Club and you know the next project, Kemp Block, you know, as everybody refers to it across the street, you know, had to do also just before COVID, you know, struck. Obviously, City of Utica was fortunate enough to be the DRI recipient. Two of the largest project awards in that were ours, you know, at the Kemp Block and New Century Club. Both projects had construction underway. We were working on both buildings. Basically, we were told by Empire State Development, uh, stop, you know, because otherwise what happens is all the costs incurred prior to the actual contract are not eligible. So we looked at the economics of it. Obviously, it made sense for us to stop. We stopped. Obviously, nobody anticipated a pandemic happening. But then basically that whole DRI process got stalled by a year behind that. We didn't even get our contracts on those for another six months after that. So unfortunately, you know, we experienced an 18-month delay in, from when we stopped to when we could start back up. So has the project itself changed since your original Nope. No, so so the new Century Club is the same. It's still going to be commercial office space. Mm -hmm. um, the exciting part, I mean, there was a lot of interest initially, you know, when we first started doing work on the building. Um, the commercial office space as a whole took the largest hit, you know, because of COVID. So many people are working from home now. Uh, these two opportunities that Mike just mentioned, you know, with the insurance company and cyber company, I mean, these are very recent. So these are over the last month. So, you know, hopefully as we really start the momentum again, the activity on the site, um, you know, will attract more tenants at that time. Uh, to answer your question, John, we, this, uh, the new century project isn't experiencing as much the escalation as like 1900 bleaker. Lumber prices now, you know, they actually recently dipped to a 30-year low. That building, if you go on the inside, has an 
all wood. So, you know, we're actually like our budget for lumber is actually coming in less. So it's actually offsetting some of the other. And we don't have as much equipment in that building as well. So that one budget wise, we're pretty much on par. So five years later, you're still on budget. Seems high. <laughs> well, we've had, I mean, the, the nice part, obviously, the DRI came in, right? right? So that was 375000 you know, we weren't expecting. So that helped pick up a lot of the, the overage as well. So a lot of the stuff we've already ordered. And I mean, if you went into that building, you'll see stacks of two by sixes and two by eights that we already had. So we've got materials on site. Plus, we have to reuse a lot of the stuff that's there. We have to put it very labor rich. But those door frames have to go back for historic preservation. That's right where they came from. We had to categorize everything. And uh, oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. <laughs> sorry. At you. Um, so they all have to go back right where they originally were located. They have to be treated and, you know, then it put back in place and repainted. Uh, so we don't, the material is one thing. It's, it's getting the folks to put the project back together. That can so be a chance. what's the estimated timeline for completion? <clears throat> we'll be done by March. Benefits end. Our benefit period ends at the end of this year. Well, the uh, sales tax exemption has. Uh, collapsed a long time ago. <clears throat> Past that, they're just on the pilot. Okay. Um, Lincoln Ave. Lincoln Ave, 1634. Let me actually jump on real quick. Did we? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we're at Camp Filling. Oh, good. Camp Filling. Okay. Yeah. 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 So that's ongoing right now. If you go over there, it's probably about 20 workers. Doing select demo, pulling up the flooring, reframing in a bunch of the areas. 252, there's two buildings there, the shorter of the two on the left. We actually have a bank that's uh, interested in taking the center suite as well as all the offices upstairs. We have a meeting with them next Monday to uh, go through the lease terms. An engineering firm indicated they want one of the other suites and a uh, uh, high end fitness center. Wants to go into one of those suites as well. So that building is very close to being completed. Uh, we talked with a coffee company, you know, cafe um, that is interested in the Panda House. Panda House has moved out. They're no longer a, a at that section. And in the camp building, 38 micro units are uh, what we're building upstairs. So they're, you know, high end studio apartments, all one bedroom with granite countertops, new hardwood floors. Uh, very nice amenities, and uh, that's also yeah, we're, we're, under construction right now. We're already getting calls for those apartments already. There's no leasing sign on that building, and already 252 is almost full. And I've had I've had showings to a small art gallery, and the lady who's going to run it, the curator, had said, "What's going in upstairs?" I said, "It's some micro apartment units." She says, I want one. I said, you don't even know what they look like. She says, I don't care. <laughs> I really don't care. This is a good location. This is where things are going to be. And uh, so, like Brian said, we're going to have a very, we will have at least up soon if we put a, a leasing sign on the building. And for people that aren't familiar with the micro unit apartments, um, a good friend of mine did the first project in Syracuse. It's actually a concept that's, you know, um, becoming more and more attractive as far as larger cities, New York City, Boston, et cetera. He brought this concept to downtown Syracuse. Everybody thought he was crazy, you know, including us. Um, he actually had 31 of his 33 units full before he opened. So I actually had him come out, take a look at the camp building. He walked through and he said, I'll tell you right now. He goes, I actually have over a year waiting list to get into the building. And he said the number two um, classifications of people that come into these are traveling nurses are number one, and number two are grad students. You know, they want to live downtown, obviously a new hospitals coming in right behind the building. You know, they want to be in close proximity, but they they can't afford, you know, $2,000 a month for an apartment, but they still want to be in that downtown atmosphere. So we're really excited about this project. We think it's going to be a resounding success. So. What's the time frame on that one? 
Uh, the 252 building, most of it will be done by the end of the year, but definitely by March fully complete. And then uh, we're working right now with our construction manager. A um, couple of things have kind of blindsided us. Like right now, there's a national shortage of getting toilets. Um, so okay. obviously nothing we would have ever expected. So, you know, right now we're looking at obtaining like the long lead type items. You know the elevators, windows, doors, you know, et cetera. So we're hoping to be substantially complete by March, but probably May. I mean, May we definitely have, want to be done. So you know, we capture obviously a lot of students. You know, that are looking for a new apartment downtown for the next cycle. So. <coughs> Lincoln Avenue. This is a project. It's uh, about 75,000 square feet. Indium used to have space in there in the office section. So it's kind of, if you go through the building, it's what we'll refer to as a Frankenstein because you just keep growing over the years and it's different parts and different construction and different technologies. We're going to keep the two story office building that's on the far left and demolish the rest of the space and put up a new 45,000 square foot uh, steel building for distribution space. We've also had some folks call us with the uh, uh, highway right directly behind it and it's accessible by two exits. It's a great location for that distribution uh, it use. We're right now cut the utilities. We are having the demo guys go through that. We, we awarded that contract, right? Yeah, right now we're just waiting on um, electric spent cut. We're just waiting on gas and water to be cut through the building. And then we'll, we've we already applied for the demolition permit to take down the 65,000 square feet. So hopefully uh, hopefully within the next couple of weeks, you know, we'll start doing the demo on that project. Uh, next one, 501 Bleecker Street. Um, so we picked this up, I believe we closed on this May, May time frame. So for those, I don't know if anybody had been inside that building before, but it's a student loan processing center. So there was a million, you know, little tiny offices all over the place, cute firms, et cetera. So what we did is uh, we had abatement and demolition crews basically go in there and, for lack of a better term, got the majority of the space. So we're not marketing it too hard yet. We want to get it a little closer, but the nice part is we've already um, toured a laboratories toward the space, uh, high-end furniture stores toward the space. Um, an insurance company is toward the space a uh, medical group is toward the space. So definitely getting a lot of activity on this is the nice part, um, you know, and we had actually driven by this property hundreds and hundreds of times going back and forth between our Bleaker and Genesee Street properties. The realtor kept saying, you know, guys, you should really take a look and purchase this. We didn't know until there was actually work being done on Bleaker we got routed around the back of the building that there was all that parking underneath. So the total parking on this uh, property is close to 500 cars. So obviously price rate has their lot. There's 200 basically under the building and then there's a parking lot across the street. So having that much on-site, you know, on-site parking is definitely the driver, mm -hmm. you know, as far as attracting us to tenants. Um, yeah, you know, this one obviously isn't isn't it a beautiful project, but this is kind of something neat that we're working on right now. So this is an 84 acre. It was actually a um, agricultural you know, farm farm, mm -hmm. and the previous developer who had bought it started the process, put mm -hmm. roadways in, utilities and hydrants, and basically got ready to start the development process on the site and. Uh, found out that there were PCBs in the soil. To this date, still nobody knows how they got there. Um, you know, so obviously for him, he didn't want nothing to do with it. You know, turned to us. We actually acquired it from him. So we have the site right now. It's actually in the state's brownfield program. Um, 
But once again, like our business model is a little different than most of most people have to have a tenant to actually do the work. We actually will do the work up front, you know, and then, you know, find the tenants later. So this site, uh, we're finishing the remedial investigation. This fall will go right into remediation. Um, these type of sites right now, uh, 1900 Bleecker Street, this type of property. I mean, the phone just rings off the hook. Everybody's looking for distribution space. Um, light manufacturing, you know, it definitely seems to be coming back as well. Um, in Syracuse, you know, there's a lot of discussion about possibly a semiconductor plant coming in as well. So, I mean, we get multiple calls per week, you know, on this property, you know, for people looking for space. So, um, this property, a lot of people don't even know we actually acquired this in July. So this is up by Opelson. It formerly had the uh, Rite Aid and Advanced Auto. Um, for those that haven't been up there recently, we've already evaded the space. Uh, it's been completely gutted. The Advanced Auto space, uh, I already signed the lease. I'm just waiting on it to be co-signed. So we have another national auto parts store that'll be entering that space. The space that had uh, formerly had Rite Aid in it as well. Um, we've already basically come to terms as far as a letter of intent there. Uh, we're waiting on basically uh, the lease to come back to us because it's another. Um, this is actually an international company. So uh, that building is close to being full, which is exciting. Um, just two, two final ones. I mean, this is one we're actually doing in downtown Syracuse. This is going to be another brownfield site, uh, right? Uh, just off of Armory Square. So we'll actually be uh, demoing the rest of this. this. Is the original cold storage building for downtown Syracuse, and putting somewhere between 100 and 150 market rate apartments on this site. And then the final one. This is the uh, uh, Rome Turney site. Uh, right as you kind of come in uh, to to the city of Rome, it's 115 years of radiator manufacturing that they did on the site. Obviously contaminated, you know. So we have the site in the brownfield program. We've already completed the abatement demolition, and uh, we should have the approval this week to start the remediation process on that site. So the we plans get, plans get, are good. Yeah, so we have the permission from the state. Yeah, but yeah, we talked with a hotel. Sorry, didn't mean to cut you off. But we talked with a hotel user and a couple of other uh, retailers, national retailers, because it's it's right on the main drag as you enter, and it's uh, very well located for that excellent visibility. So those are the those are the plans of that project. Any questions, Mark? Again, if anybody wants a tour of any of these projects here, we'd like to see some progress. Just let us know. From, you know, Jack, if you're anytime you want. Jack was brave enough last week to do the tour of the Kemp block, and you know, it does may not look like it, you know, on the front of it, but there's a lot of people and a lot of activity inside that building. Right now. So, if anybody wants a tour, you know, if you have an open invitation, so please Thanks. let us know. Great. <laughs> All right. Great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very, very much. much. Appreciate your time. No trouble at all. Take care. Leave me one. Mm -hmm. Leave me one extra. Thank you. Talk to you soon. All right. Take care. We're doing executive session. <clears throat> uh, sure. Can, you, can we do it with this thing? Um. Yeah. Yeah. I can just hit, hit hit stop and forward and about financing and related to. Mm -hmm. This applicant, so um, I'm not sure I'm going to accept it. Second, I'm second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? So moved. Third one.
Okay. Next time okay. you sit on this side of the table, Laura. Yes, sir. <laughs> Quick question. Have you ever, he was talking about air conditioning units and they can't get them in six to eight weeks. Right. Is he, have you told him about metal logics? Joel Bamaldi makes that stuff right here. Yeah, it's different than I think the units. You're, Joel makes uh, air handling units. So they're taking taking the air out, pumping it back in because they need to have uh, changes of air quality inside the building. But these are actually like heater units. I think he does those. I used to insure him. I've been to that plant a number of times. Yeah, I have too. And I know Joel pretty well and his, what he does. I'll, I'll check with him. I can stop by today. The, the Lincoln Street project that they have? Yeah. You might want to, because uh, as I recall, didn't uh, Mohawk Hospital split their operation up, Little Falls and Utica? Mm -hmm. That might be a good location for them. Oh, to bring them back? Yeah. Yes. Uh, perhaps, you know, I'll put the bug in somebody's ear. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, we're going to resume. Okay. Okay. Uh, back to the top of the order. Yep. Approval, Approval of the minutes, August 17, 2022. Did we get a chance to review them? Uh, there was a, a small change that uh, Laura had, uh, well, Linda had made um, in the 1400. It was uh, new business A. Uh, the change was um, in that uh, uh, Linda stated that uh, she further. Linda, who is she, further stated that Ms. Uh, Shepard retained a different attorney to represent her through the IDA process. So there's a little change there. And then also under. Yeah, that attorney the, is not from Von Schoenig. That's it's it's not from Von Schoenig. Right, right. So that was my bad on there. And then uh, the other was a break, a, a further breakdown of the uh, benefits to the art space. Uh, project. So just it, listing out what the sales tax was, what it the, have been the 1400. Oh, the, oh, it was part of the, I think it was you're, you're right. You're right. Yeah. You're right. Okay. So the changes are on the version that I have here. Okay. If somebody wants to see yep. it, right? What I passed out to you. Yeah. Right. The motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor. Aye. Opposed. So moved. Broad Street. Okay. <clears throat> um, uh, we're uh, here to uh, consider a final authorizing resolution relating to the 1400 Broad LLC slash the Shepherd Group LLC BMG supply facility, approving financial assistance in the form of exemptions from sales tax valued at $72,188, exemptions from mortgage recording tax valued at $4,784. And reduction of real property tax for a period of 10 years valued at $155,918, which financial assistance is consistent with the agency's uniform tax exemption policy, making the finding that the project is reasonably necessary to preserve the competitive position of the project occupant in its industry and authorizing the form and execution of related documents all in the agency standard forms and subject to council review. Any questions on the BGM project? That can I get a motion to approve. Second. 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 Amendment. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? So moved. GSCB LLC. Okay. Uh, in your packet, there was a uh, re request for an extension uh, for that project. Uh, it is uh, ended in the end of August, I believe. And they're looking for an extension out to the end of December. Uh, no new uh, money is requested. Just an uh, extension. Okay, I'll do the supply chain and everything else. You got it. Yeah. Right. Any questions? Not going to get a motion. I'll get a motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? So moved. Okay, finance, um, committee. finance committee. We are. How do we want to do that? Just um, you make can, a motion to. Yes, we okay. don't need to close the idea meeting. We make a motion to. One of the things that uh, John and I talked about yesterday is wondering whether we should do our own market study on apartments. 
you know, there seems to be more and more of them coming in and they're bringing their own studies, but should we have our own? So I'm wondering if maybe that, a little if that Utica housing yeah, study is maybe yeah. it's a little bit more, you know, yeah, I, neutral than it would be when they're bringing them to us. You know? In the Utica housing study, you know, what I read is the demand is not reflective of what's going on Tennessee Bank Square. You know, the, the demand is on the low income, you know, the lower end, uh, lower median right. income earners that affordable. Right. No. That's where the demand is. It's not for with my take on it, I read it a month ago. It's it's it doesn't support entirely what you know what Bowers is doing and uh, what the other projects is doing. Mm -hmm. so there's you know that's the big part of the city where you know we have two thirds of the population are in a load of moderate income sure. and probably probably less than a third are you know you know middle income and higher. Right. Um, and there's no housing for for that latter group. So I don't know how that fits in with got to be some blend. I'm not smart enough to figure that out. Uh, I noticed that, you know, there's more people and fewer households. So, you know, it, we need housing for families. Right. And they're not going to be in micro units. Right. I'm not sure how to address that. Right now. Or, lo or loss in general. Oh, no. Right, right. Yeah. I think this does it. Over six, six people per there or apartment with in that study. Yeah, again, that's West Utica, East Utica, parts of the city all over, but right. that's where the population is. Um, I think it'd be hand, uh, helpful to uh, maybe not at this meeting at the next or whatever, uh, is to bring in Derek who worked on that right, and just is. see what you know what what his take is and what the, the general but that, that's going to be separate from this because right. how many units do we have today completed, occupied, or available to be occupied? How many are in that thing? Construction. How many are proposed? And then that's our universe. So a thousand units? Is it five hundred units? I I wish I knew. And right. I'm sure there's the realtors know and probably others, but you know, what is our universe yeah. and how many people are going to come in from full speed and for the hospital and other other draws. You know, just we're going to run into potentially uh, over capacity. Mm -hmm. Understood. So that's why we thought uh, we had our own kind of our own person out there. Looking at it the way we want to look at it, as opposed to you know buying the sky, we got you know thirty six mm -hmm. micro units and they're all going to be running. Okay, so, you know, so. well, we do have that one part of the yeah. college downtown now, so perhaps we'll get some people for that. Yeah, but we have some people like one. And that's the carbon has you know, gray buildings mm -hmm. and all that's all, but that's about twelve units. Yeah, so there's pockets yep. of those ten to twelve units plus you know what Mike Pesanella has and. And what others? Right, like, GSB. That's yeah. one, two or three floors of apartments. And yeah, at least how two many apartments is he going to put in the payroll bill? Right. The real problem is you have all that old mill housing in West Utica that's just not in habitable. Anymore. Right. Big part of the city where a lot of people used to live. I was kind. Of, I was kind of hoping that with Globe Mill, then they would be taking. You know, somebody would be taking down tracks over that old garbage housing. Just to get rid of it and clear the space for you know either better housing or some other community amenities. But How you know. are they it? I'm curious. Um, I mean, because they're out of town and never yeah, the problem starting there. So yeah, I've I've uh, talked with the uh, manager in the past because you know the mayor has expressed you know uh, you know unhappiness with him. The old Globe Mill crossing the brewery, the big yeah. Um, Who did that housing? On Oneida Street, where they re renovated all these old houses and made them, I mean, they still look really pretty good. Isn't that an outfit out of Syracuse? Yeah, Housing Basically. Visions. Yeah. Housing Visions. That's Housing Visions. Yeah. So they have, uh, 
they have Mayfield, they have, you know, like different names, Kembleton and stuff like that, a bunch of different, uh, you know, little pockets that they have on, on different roads and you know, streets there. So what are you telling us about 12 mil? Oh, just that, uh, you know, the mayor's displeasure. So I, I contacted the, uh, uh, the management company. I haven't uh, talked to them lately, but it's, you know, something on the, on the radar for me to do. Because there was just, you know, reports of people hanging out and, you know, it just wasn't being kept, you know, in the manner that we were thinking it should have been. Um, so, do you know their occupancy? They were, uh, I think they were doing good, but then with the pandemic, then you couldn't evict anybody. So, I think they got caught up into that. Oh, That's why they had some not so great tenants yeah. and just kind of got stuck into that, you know, into that little cycle. So, um, I'm sure that once the, because the courts, you know, have opened up as far as, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. getting people, yeah, evictions and stuff. So I'm sure that they've been in, you know, they've had their cases that they're I mean, That's a big building that's got to have a lot of capacity. Yes. Yeah. You know, well, three quarter the around income you're talking about. You know, yeah. yeah. Two, two thirds, three, three quarter of it is mar is affordable. And then that balances the, the market rate. Yeah. You know, and they're just kind of mixed in with each other. So it's not, you know, so everybody wasn't segregated. Oh, don't go into the good building type of thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, do we need, are we going to have a motion to go into? Through the, yeah. Motion to go on the finance committee. Yeah. Yeah, and then call the finance committee meeting to order. Mark, second it. Okay. Call the finance committee meeting to order. Yeah, Joe. Uh, just the uh, budget. Everybody had a chance to uh, review it. Um, if there's any questions on it, pretty straightforward. Um, I will have a an update. I talked with the IT guy, and we're trying to ramp up the uh, the Wi-Fi again. Uh, long, long delay project, yes. Um, but uh, he says that you know we're going to start going back on it, so we can you know hopefully. Get some money out the door and help the city with that project. Questions on the budget? No. Motion to approve. I think the IDA needs to, I think the finance committee needs to agree on the form submitted to the IDA board for the IDA. So, what's that process? Just Approve it to the board to send yes. it to the recommendation board. committee. And we'll yes, to a yeah. motion to approve the recommendation for the yeah. house and 23 budget as presented. Mm -hmm. Well, should I make a motion? I think it's just a recommendation at this point. Then we'll come out of the finance committee. Then it go. then okay. the regular board will be here. Correct. I'll make a recommendation. Yep. <laughs> it works. Move it. Yeah. <laughs> Just get out of here. Second. Yeah. All right. Opposed. So moved. Okay. Then adjourn, adjourn finance and go back to the adjourn. Yeah. So Mark, under new business. Mark made a motion to adjourn. I'm a second. <laughs> I got that. <laughs> now we're back in session. Are you motion to approve the budget? I'm of it, John. Second. As recommended by the Finance Committee. A second. <laughs> Mark, second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I'll see you adjourn. Unanimous. Yeah, it's a finance. So let's look in this finance somebody to do a survey. Just the market setting. Yeah. yeah, just for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Got to be somebody out there. I don't know who does that stuff. Use anybody at the bank for that moment? No, uh, 10 o'clock. Yep. We haven't. Uh, we, we have seen some of the larger regional or national uh, appraisal firms will go a lot deeper than you know, some of the locals between here and Syracuse. So you get some good market data, but I haven't seen anything specific to this, you know, this product. I've seen more for 
manufacturing or warehouse. Right. Um, you see it with the other RDAs you deal with? Um, I 